Hello and welcome everyone to Flight Club by Flight Levels Academy, where you get to know people and topics around flight levels. My name is Klaus Leopold and um, my guest today is Kirill, Kirill Klimov. Hello, uh, Klaus. Hi, everybody. Great to be here. Perfect. Thanks for being here. Um, well, Kirill, today we want to talk a little bit about flight levels and uh, you suggest that you want to talk a little bit about a few unique features of flight levels. That sounds cool, actually. But before we jump into the topic about flight levels and what is unique about flight levels, uh, let's talk a little bit about you. So who are you, actually? <laughs> so again, I'm Kirill, and uh, like I'm in this field of like whatever you call it, product development within knowledge creative work for like a bit more than 20 years. Um, and I spent like big portion uh, of that time like developing software as a product in a, in a small organization where I've started to experiment with the processes and there basically where I've got hit by all these new ways of work, uh, Agile. And I started to use it with my uh, teams and then apparently over time starting to help other friends and that became what I'm focusing on for like the past decade. And uh, so basically yeah, I'm using these new approaches of work to help to drive organizations to uh, like better place, whatever that is, um, helping with the challenges they may, may be facing. Typically it's because of their growth pains. So basically they are outgrow their capability or comfort zone and they are aware that it's not going to work this way and they need something uh, that is going to work. So that's okay. more or less it. And from here, I can basically jump right into uh, the story like of me and flight levels. So but before you go there, I would like to know actually what what have you done before? I mean, you weren't born as a organizational de developer. Can we say something like this? So, what is actually your background? Are you a computer scientist or a gardener or I don't know? <laughs> so that's also interesting because, um, like, I'm by education, I'm a physicist. Mm. So, but already back then, so w during the university, like several things were happening. So one is that it was clear that I'm pretty much interested in a lot of other stuff. So like I was already started to learn way more about like networking, servers and programming. That's like one uh, line. Other line is that I've started actually first part-time work and then full-time job while learning. So it's not that like I've learned it only then this magically decided to go there, but it's, it's I can like to me, it was pretty much natural. So one thing led to another. Yeah. And now you are where you are, a physicist. I didn't notice actually. Nice. <laughs> but uh, that's actually like when you think about it, uh, like I'm truly blessed for having that experience and uh, like because like a lot of it I'm using uh, like in, in a practice because what that learned me was basically trying to explain the world around you with the, with some simpler models and then with the help of math like do something about it and then actually validate those in, in real life. So basically run experiments mm -hmm. and see uh, like to what extent the model actually describes the reality. And that's exactly what we are doing with the organizational behavior. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well, in my, in my next life, I want to become a physicist. That's what I <laughs> what I say all the time. But <laughs> let's see. <laughs> okay, so... Um, yeah, you somehow, um, yeah, as you said, one step led to another, and now you're like in this uh, organizational development, helping organizations, and you're also a flight levels guide and a flight levels coach. H how did you actually, yeah, cross path with flight levels? So, like, I was like watching flight levels for quite long time, I would say, 
and basically checking out like what's happening, like presentations at the conferences and so on uh, and so forth. Not, not only from you, but like from others, from the community as well. And so like I was observing the development of the concepts and that was kind of interesting um, and nice. And then at some point of time, I decided, okay, maybe it's like a good moment now to dive a bit deeper into like what's going on and to learn it a bit deeper. So I did that. And from then, basically, I'm like using more and more some of these ideas and concepts in my work. Mm, cool. Yeah. And well, you wanted to talk a little bit about what's unique about flight levels. And I kind of like this idea, actually. <laughs> and yeah, that's one of the things I've learned over the years when basically teaching and uh, consulting others that you should be like really very careful with what you're saying. Because there are multiple, multiple ways it could be misunderstood, misused, and so oh, yes. on and so forth. So the first point I'm going to make here is just a few unique things about the flight levels. It's far not uh, exhaustive list of the unique things about the flight level. Because when you say kind of unique items from the flight levels, and then they probably talk about like one or two, or maybe three, and then people may judge their conclusion out is it all like is yeah. it just about it so no it's not all it's just my maybe few favorites if you wish uh so that's kind of one caveat the other one is also interesting like, again i'm kind of pretty nerdy uh like historically so i'm i'm looking for like really interesting stuff from oh, like historically looking from like the content perspective, like how can it work, like what the model, like what it provides, uh, like the hard part of it, if you wish. Therefore, I think for a long time, I was kind of missing one of the unique parts about the flight levels, which is like positioning or messaging about the flight levels. Because again, over time, when working with the people and organization, I come to realization it's like way less about the methods or approaches, but very often the how we use those or the execution of those and how those are accepted. And that's like the crucial and important because it might be the perfect idea or a perfect method, but then it's not accepted by the people and it like, has no no sense and no use and not uh, within the organization. And from that perspective, I think uh, flight levels is basically uh, pretty unique in terms of it provides the kind of easy way to start the conversation uh, about mm -hmm. things that are important. And basically it's for a lot of matters, it's kind of the new way to teach or explain um idea so not only i think we can innovate in terms of new stuff like our core stuff so like what's happening in within but also on how we are teaching stuff or basically how we are letting others learn stuff and mm. that area is where i think flight levels came to like a lot of uh, wins in terms of it is easier to start the conversation and it is um, again new approaches on how you are addressing some of the mm. questions within organization development which we are I think we'll go uh, to more details later yeah like so, related uh... for a fellow safe for example just just to 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 make a to make an example so are you referring to for instance the three levels uh which are easy to which are accessible or are uh, are you thinking of of something else no i mean this, this, yeah on the first really the first glance this metaphor of three levels and basically three different perspectives like making total sense and it's something that you can like easily explain. People can easily relate and they can see. And again, that's 
the start of the conversation. And then, yeah, yeah light levels is addressing like a few very typical pains that, my, from my experience, a lot of organizations are facing. And that's also pretty appealing because when you start with something that others, even if not facing at the moment, but have seen in the past, that like mm -hmm. it, uh, appealing and basically they are interested to see how it could be addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is, um, I mean, it, 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 it took actually quite long to be short in these messages, like for instance, uh, three levels and all these kind of things. But it's also a little bit of danger in it because um, some people might think, oh, that's very, very easy to do. I mean, one thing is that you somehow understand it, but it's also easy to understand it wrong not right because at least what I, what I see quite often when it comes to the three levels that um, people immediately start to match this to their org chart I mean flight level one the operational level the teams I mean this is the org chart right because you will see uh, like teams on an org chart and then they are like like flight level three strategy this is C level and flight level two is middle management done and then you basically just map all your departments and stuff like this to this idea and then you are done but that's actually not the point right so there's also um a little bit of um yeah uh, the, the potential of misunderstanding in it but nevertheless it starts a conversation and that's what i like so yeah, if and you have the chance to start the conversation then you can clarify these misunderstandings but the problem is when you don't start this conversation and i think all the ideas or concepts could be misunderstood regardless if yeah. they are like simple or complex Agreed. So yes even simple stuff could be misunderstood that's one part but the other part is also the simplicity of the not even the idea expression of the idea does not mean it's really will be easy to use it later on or yeah. that i mean even if you got the concept right of let's say these three flight levels and like you even learned about the five activities that you are like about to perform in order to improve your system but then you have to do those activities and that's not necessarily uh, that easy. Yeah, <laughs> agree, agree. Yeah, and uh, honestly, to a certain extent, um, I like that it is somehow misunderstood. So for instance, like, um, like you have these uh, three levels, right? So this looks quite hierarchical. So the thing is you get with people in the conversation who see hierarchies in there but then you can say okay it's not about hierarchies but still you have something you can talk about and this is somehow um nice so you somehow connect where people where people are although as i said before there might be uh there might be problems coupled to this okay so um framing messaging that that that's one thing what do you think is is quite uh unique with flight levels what so else? yeah the, i mean that was kind of the more on the meta level and something i come to realization like later on um yeah one of the areas that i'd like for sure to mention today because it's one of the things i'm really passionate about is the fl3d uh mm. which is basically uh like flight levels three and which is very much about the strategy and the like the typical challenge mm, this like area of flight levels is addressing is the gap uh in between the strategy and the execution and again from my experience that is what a lot of organizations are facing and basically, they might be facing, and that's that's also kind of interesting. That's something I was not thinking from the very beginning. Not necessarily like you have it only on organizational level. You can have it on lower levels. Like even within your department, there might be some strategy, and then there is a possibility to like have a gap in between that strategy and execution. And yeah, like one of the things we are kind of referring in the materials, and I still think it's like illustration that unfortunately a lot of organizations are seeing two way often is like you are 
present it with the strategy at the beginning of the year and then everybody like kind of okay nice uh, now we know it and then they continue to work on their stuff through the year and then like somewhere probably towards the end of q3 or the q4 they uh, somehow like wake up because of recalling about the strategy and they starting to map whatever they have completed and achieved to the strategy and yeah that's the illustration of like the obvious gap uh and like again in between this execution and like what what the idea and flight level three is just about that uh about bringing the gap so bringing the operations to the strategy and then like of course it is related to the working with the strategy like what your strategy yeah. is and uh, how to operate yeah yeah well um i did a, a book search i guess it was a year ago or so on amazon and if you if you look for um uh, books with the titles or where strategy is somewhere in the title or in the abstract um there were more than fifty thousand results in the category of business so <laughs> I, you know i did i did similar to one of my recent presentations on the conferences but i have a more narrow search which was organizational strategy and i have more than ten thousand results yeah so it <laughs> is actually quite a lot but now we are talking about uh strategy as well in flight levels land so and um <laughs> what's like really cool about it is is that flight levels is not going to reinvent the bicycle and is not going to teach others like how to do your strategy because Really, there are tons of other resources that are available as well. And again, I'm like I might have very limited experience. From my experience, it's not the problem that people don't know like how to address the strategy. It's just like either like how it is done in terms of execution or like some gaps in between, uh, like in communication or like in what you're doing. So it's not about the strategy is missing. It's something else. Yeah. And that something else is addressed with the flight level. Yeah. Yeah. I usually always say it's not a lack of ideas. Silicon Valley is full of great ideas. The thing is, are you able to execute these ideas? And yeah. And I think I agree with you. Actually, this is really where flight levels um, yeah, can bring can bring some where flight level can help actually and i think the um, i mean for me the 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 unique thing in in flight level three because i also think flight level three design uh is is kind of unique and this is that as you already said so um we are you can basically take whatever you do in terms of strategy development take it and you use flight levels um, as a help to execute this strategy. And I think this is kind of sexy. So because uh, when I remember a couple of years ago, uh, it wasn't easy like this. So uh, whenever I was doing a, a flight level three design workshop, I really, um, yeah, was it, it was a huge preparation effort because this company was doing Ho Chi Minh Country, another uh, company was doing, I don't know, OKRs, the others had, I know there are so, so many frameworks out there or like strategy development methods out there and they had all these methods in place and I was like okay but now uh, they want flight levels uh, to help them uh, with the execution so it was always a tailored workshop actually so that we can somehow work together with OKRs and flight levels and Hoshin Kanri and so on but I think um, talking about uniqueness this strategic interface, what we call SOFI, strategy, outcomes, and, and flight items, I find this actually as one of the unique parts within Flight Level 3 design. So the, the idea is you just take what's there in your company, you map it to an interface, and then you are in Flight Levels land. And this is kind of nice. <laughs> it is. And like in, if, yeah, talking to more details, like SOFI, for example, like another aspect that I found particularly interesting and I've actually got this question like so many times in the past. And yeah, that's one of the focus areas I would say of um, flight level three design as well. And that is how you limit work in progress in your flight level three. So like in terms like in on your 
strategy arise and how you are limiting work in progress because like the usual ideal limiting just by the number is like kind of not necessarily working because what there might be like two initiatives and they are I don't know a few hundred times different um, in the impact and the size and still though like for some reason they are both on the strategy so like how you create yeah focus and how you set constraints um like different ways of doing it that's that's the part of this like body of knowledge if you wish and that that's interesting um mm-hmm. do, and do yeah, you have like some we, examples yeah like, well, i mean the just to mention a few things like the budgeting obviously may work uh or the kind of capacity allocation so basically when you allocate uh, like several, let's say, kind of streams of work, and then basically uh, pass some work through it, and then mm-hmm. the time frame. So there are ways how you can do it. Actually, one of the interesting, interesting kind of the back ideas is that again, from my experience, oftentimes when we are talking about the strategy, very much the limiting factor is the executive's attention. And from that perspective, limited by the number may still work. And how you can see it, if you have the board with, let's say, I don't know, 50 items, like it's not working because like it's too much yeah. and no way people can like even discuss it altogether. If it's 10, it might be different story. So just from those observations, you may you may see if it's kind of too much or not. Mm, yeah, that that's definitely a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And budgeting, budgeting on flight level three. I guess that that's actually quite a quite a big topic. And um, because I think I don't know how to say it, but. Um, many companies they are so fixated on costs so how much does it cost this project or something like this but what we want to do on a flight level three we want to change the conversation i actually don't want to talk about costs on a flight level three because i want to talk about investments so i invest in the future of my company right so i mean i have costs right but these are the operational costs that um yeah i i have them anyway right but the thing is on a flight level three when it, especially when it comes to strategy how do i want to shape my uh, company so that it's fit for the future right so i take uh, an investment like a like on the like on the stock market right so like you a invest, bet yeah like a bet exactly and um but the thing is uh we don't say don't talk about costs at all but that's more like a, a flight level two flight level one kind of thing and on a flight level three we take the strategic decisions and this is like an investment decision and i kind of like this this separation so it's not about everything is a bet or everything is costs it's actually both of it um, and, and and actually you can bring the same line of thinking kind of the same approach to the flight level two as well and actually i think those who are successful did it already because for example if you are running some experiment it also kind of bad because you're investing some time and some efforts into basically trying something out and you hope for some result but i mean it can end up with nothing or it can end up with something interesting exactly. it's also a bad but just on a yeah. different scale Exactly. Yeah, and, and I like what you just said. So maybe this this even can can bring us into another topic. Um, yes, on a flight level two, um, we we might also think about bets and investments, uh, and this could be a, a mixture between flight level three and flight level two, maybe. So is there this strategic thinking uh, part of our daily doing? then we could say, okay, maybe it's not a pure flight level two system where we only only focus on delivering uh, the stuff, but we also have some strategic information into it. So that's actually what we try to figure out when we build the work systems topology, right? So uh, can we blend flight levels together, for instance? And also just to get back to like kind of flight level three, if you think about it, 
like strategy itself, it's static. So mm. it's not moving. In order to see some progress, you have to connect it to uh, operations. So you have to connect it to execution, to execution, which is flight level. So you yes. have to obtain some amount of information from flight level to this way or other way around to get your strategy uh, life, to bring some life into your strategy, if you wish. And totally. like, again, from kind of pure board design, if you wish perspective, yes, you have you can have mixture of FL3 and FL2 or not. Like it's it's the other question. It, yeah, it might be kind of FL3 with a bit of FL2. It might be other way around what you just saying, like FL2 with some bits of FL3, uh, explaining like where all of it is going. It no. might be like both two and three. Again, um, I was mentioned in the conference I was recently presenting. And one of the examples there is basically just the the, the whole board for mid-size organization and it's pure mix of FL3 and two. Yeah, 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 that is nice. That is nice. Um, maybe this even brings some light to, I, I like what you just said. So maybe, maybe this brings some, some, some light to the three levels. So they are not isolated. The thing is you need to connect these three levels. So um, if, you, if you really want to achieve business agility, right? I, I cannot just only focus on strategy and nothing else. And I cannot only focus on, I don't know, operation and nothing else. So we need to bring these flight levels together. And maybe if you are a small company uh, and you have, I don't know, five employees, not more, five people working at the company, you have three flight levels. Maybe you have only one board and this is like the... <laughs> your motherboard and you see strategy you see operations you see everything on it right uh and maybe if you are um bigger uh the boards um start to yeah one board is is not enough if there are i don't know two thousand people running around uh it makes sense to segment these these boards somewhere yeah and i think that's that's i mean we, we're somehow going into the discussion of flight level systems architecture um, which, yeah, which yeah. is which is which is the super nice uh, like breacher connection because that's one of the other topics I was uh, really like about to talk today. Uh, another like very interesting area of knowledge like within the flight level, which is about how we are building the system. And I think yes, we are getting back to the initial point of kind of new ways of uh, learning and exploring the systems we have and understanding, actually starting from understanding of where we are um, and how we can improve it. And from that perspective, I think again, overall flight level systems architecture concept is um, very interesting uh, and exciting approach on how you can do it. And then within Within that, there is like very kind of specific idea that again, historically I like pretty much, which is about the flight routes. And mm. that's, that's, I believe, like very unique uh, to the flight levels. And the idea is very simple. Basically you are watching, checking on how the work is moving in between different systems or like even within the same system. So like whatever the work element is, like is it your task, uh, user story, epic, again, whatever it is in the flight level land, we call it flight item. So what would be the transition of the element? Like how it is mm. moving in between the system and we call it flight route and by just learning about it, uh, observing, you can actually derive pretty much interesting information. And there is a way how you can even like build the system out of this information, which again, from when I first thought about it, it was kind of mind breaking, which is mm. interesting. So yeah, that's one of those kind of hardcore concepts, if you wish, where it's like, to me, pretty much new and interesting. And it also was 
uh, like really interesting to see like how people are are using it and like what's what you can get out just in a practical matter when building the system. Mm, okay, so flight routes within flight level systems architecture. That's what I heard. That that's that's something that's uh, unique. Um, I would totally agree. And actually, I had yesterday a, a very good conversation with Jose Casal. You know him for sure. <laughs> Uh, he's also one of the of our flight level guides, and um, we were talking about how to teach flight level systems architecture. And um, he and uh, JP uh, Jean Paul Bailey, they are teaching it the other way around. So um, they start with the flight routes. So mm. they're like, okay, um, we try to map out the flows in the organization and the different flows, and seeing how these flows actually are we get to the work systems topology. So for the people who don't know what a, what a work systems topology is, it basically tells you what are the flight level one, two, three systems in your organization and how are they connected. And the flight route tells you, okay, how's work now flying across these uh, flight level one, two, three systems. And usually we start with the work systems topology, right? So what are the flight level one, two, three systems, especially flat, discovering the flight level two system is not a, it's not an easy task to do. And then we go to the flight routes, um, but I kind of like it to do it uh, the other way around because you're somehow very close to what's currently going on uh, in the organization. Have, have you actually thought about this <laughs> before? I, I, I actually, like now when you tell about the idea, I like the idea very much because oftentimes people have some idea on basically how the work is going through the system. Not necessarily yeah. they thought like all their lifetime about it, but if you ask the question, they can think about it and basically they can make it up. While the all those boxes in the work system topology, those are really depending on basically how you do it. There are different multiple ways by design how you can do it. So yeah. there is like way more ambiguity when you start with the process and for a lot of people i truly can see if you start with really a lot of ambiguity it's not a i mean it's hard to start from the other mm -hmm. hand if you're starting from something you can like easier understand it's it keeps you going and then you yeah. may think okay they're going this way but they're if they're going this way okay what is they're going from here to here. What are these two pieces? Uh, how we can call it, and so that can frame the whole conversation. So yeah, yeah, I I like this idea, and I, I need to try it once. I think it, it has. Um, you need to have the right people in the room. So, but I, I think that's that's always the case uh, when it comes to flight level systems architecture, especially because it's it's not the most intuitive thing, probably. <laughs> so and it's it's I mean if you are I don't know just starting off with um, your uh, professional career and you haven't seen a lot of organizations I think you you're kind of struggling so yeah. what's going on here and, and, um, and also I think it is super different um, when you are doing it in a company in a private setting or if you are doing it in any kind of public setting where yeah. you have participants from different organizations yeah totally and then the, the approach could be like completely different and what you're doing could be completely different. yeah yeah so uh, what, what we are experimenting uh, or not experiment what we are actually doing uh, quite often um, especially in in in-house settings so there's one company and we need to come up with a uh, with a flight level systems architecture we spread this workshop over a couple of weeks actually two weeks three weeks so you have some bits and parts and there are always new questions popping up and now people have the chance to go back and and gain this information and then they incorporate it in the um yeah in the design of the of, of the systems architecture you cannot do this in a public workshop setting so it's it's quite hard but yeah totally agree that this is uh totally two different games actually yeah nice so um we are talking about unique features, some unique features of flight levels. We were talking about the framing messaging of flight levels. We were talking about flight level three design, and here, uh, in particular, in particular, uh, a little bit about budgeting and stuff like this. 
now we were talking about flight routes and flight level systems architecture. So are these the the three the three things you had in your mind, or is there more? Um, I don't know, like to what, yeah, I'd like to, again, we've started with the like approach on how you are bringing messaging uh, and new ways of like exploring and learning and then few more kind of the content side parts and then now like I'd like to switch a bit on um uh, switch angle and bring another point which is different which is I don't know kind of if, if we can count it as a unique or not but what I'm seeing more and more what are people are doing with the flight levels is that because it's kind of the very lightweight approach, uh, even though we're like we are calling it the thinking model, I don't think it's like only the model because there are really a lot of tools like around. So it's a bit more yeah. than that. Uh, still though, what I can see for like my experience and a lot of other guides and coaches and practitioners, that they are using it together with other models, frameworks, and tools uh, like to help organizations. So basically organization may be like struggling with something and then basically you're using flight levels. I would not like to call like on top of something together with something. Yeah. Uh, so that it works better. Mm. So mix and match. Exactly. Mixing and matching, and that works perfectly. Again, by design, uh, like flight levels are not addressing a lot of questions, like yeah. we just discussed with the strategy, right? So it's not telling you how to do strategy. So there are like plenty of space around, therefore this kind of mix and match works like really, really well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, maybe this is even part of the design of it. Maybe it, 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 it's, of course, not a conscious decision. But um, so uh, when I just see where flight levels come from, so there, there, there was always a, a different situation at an organization. And it's not about, okay, stop doing what you are doing right now. Everything is bullshit. We need to reboot your entire organization. I was never this kind of guy. I always tried to see, okay, what's working well? So let's build on this. So I guess this is probably the natural, it, it's the natural way how this emerged out of it. So if there was Scrum, for instance, somewhere going on in the organization, people were happy with Scrum, but uh, it was quite hard that the Scrum teams, uh, yeah, that they, they, they didn't coordinate well enough. It, it, it doesn't make sense to say stop doing scrum do something else do project management now or something like this <laughs> but solve this problem of how to coordinate uh, uh scrum teams so sometimes it's easy like this if you have a problem like that scrum is still there on flight level one but you build the flight level two system where all the scrum teams meet so this is this is exactly this mix or that that's what I understood actually what you said this mix and match approach right so there is something going on in an organization um, let's and I was also thinking where you said okay not on top flight was not on top of it even even I don't know what it is maybe it's more like a loop <laughs> which is like <laughs> yeah I don't know it's <laughs> it, it it makes the the cock turn a little bit better. <laughs> um the wheels of of the organization or something like this um yeah um yeah i think and that's it, really that's... i mean yeah it, it might be helping in different ways so it might be bring some of this like concept that may be absent in that like whatever other approach or way of doing it uh like for example flight uh, routes or it might be again this way like kind of something new about how you're exploring your system, how you're building your system. And then you are using this kind of exploration together with your approach and getting the all like the other benefits from that. So yeah. there are tons of different ways on how you can actually mix and match. Mm. Yeah. Nice. 
So mix and match. Flight yeah, through. that's that. Yeah, that would be uh, one diff one more like kind of different, unique feature of the flight level. Okay, cool. Mix and match. Flight routes. Uh, Flight level three, a lot of flight level three and framing and messaging. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that that's that sounds um sounds like a cool thing. Um yeah, maybe we can even think of if there is more, but not for today. And as you said, one thing is what is unique, is everything uh, in it unique? I don't know. But I think these are um you highlighted some 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 great aspects of, of uh, flight levels. Um yeah. Nice. I think cool. the easiest way would be like today I was talking about like my favorite ones. So if some other flight guide, let's say, uh, will hear this podcast and will notice, ah, oh, my favorite one wasn't mentioned. That's basically the way how you can bring more. Perfect. That sounds like a good idea. So we come up with um, yeah, with a highlights gallery sooner or later. <laughs> Nice, cool. Cool. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kirill, for spending some time with me. And yeah, to we'll talk a little bit about you and uh about some features of flight levels. If you are uh if you want to know more about Kirill, um there will be um the link to his profile. So get in touch with him if you uh think he can help you out in your organization somewhere. Um don't hesitate and contact him. That's it for today. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Kirill. It's cool to see. And yeah, looking forward for more. Yes, definitely more. All right. So goodbye. Bye. Thanks, Klaus. Thank you for listening to the Flight Levels podcast. Subscribe now to be updated for the next episode. Did this podcast remind you of anybody? Share the link with that person that you think should also join the flight club. And join our free community to have access to a lot of free content as well as direct contact with all the coaches and members. Visit our web to create your account and more information. Go to flightlevels.io.